All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so in this video, I want to continue sort of teasing out the relationship between uh, the definition of continuity for a function at a point P and the idea of limits, right? And so we defined continuity at a point in a very similar way to how we defined uh, the limit of a function at a point. And in fact, they were close enough that, as we saw earlier, the definition of continuity is equivalent to a specific limit definition, right? So a function is continuous at a point P if and only if the limit as x goes to P of f of x is actually equal to f of P. Now, what that means is that when we have a statement about limits, we can often come up with an equivalent or a sort of corresponding statement about continuity, right? So if we have a, a theorem involving uh, limits, we can often come up with a similar theorem involving continuity or continuous functions. Uh, so for example, let's take a look at the sequential criterion for continuity, right? What we'll see is that this is exactly built on the sequential criterion for limits that we discussed in class. So for example, uh, to read this second theorem, the sequential criterion for continuity, suppose G is a function on some domain and let P be an accumulation point of D. I should really say that not only is it an accumulation point of D, uh, it should simply be a point in the domain, point of D, uh, and in D. Then the following two statements are equivalent. First, G is continuous at P aka the limit as x goes to p of g of x is actually equal to g of p. All right. Second, given any sequence a sub n entirely contained within the domain, as long as a sub n converges to p, it will follow that g of a sub n, right, a sequence in the codomain, will converge to g of p. Now, this probably sounds a little familiar. It should sound familiar. This is equivalent to, or I should say corresponds heavily to, the sequential criterion for limits, which is listed directly above it, right? So once again, we have the, this relationship between a limit and a definition involving sequences. Um, and really clearly, we see that these two theorems are basically the same it's just that in the theorem uh, down here, we've adapted our approach to be considering a function uh, whose limit is not just some abstract L, but is actually the value G of P itself, right? And so you can see a direct correspondence between these two. All right, and because these two statements are so similar, you can imagine that the proofs of the two statements are also very similar, and that is absolutely the case. If we wanted to prove the sequential criterion for continuity, we would follow basically the same steps that we did in proving the sequential criterion for limits. Um, we won't do it here, but we have, uh, yeah, I'll say we won't actually do that here in this video, and I won't necessarily ask you to do it step-by-step um, step in class, but if you are uh, interested or if you want to, to try to work through this, follow a similar framework to what we did in the sequential criterion for limits, simply replacing our arbitrary L with a specific uh, G of P, and we should arrive at the correct conclusion. Um, in, the, uh, in the text, the sequential criterion for continuity comes in at theorem 6.16. Uh, we also have theorem 6.15, which I don't have a slide for, uh, but that's the algebra of continuous functions. For example, if you add two continuous functions together, f plus g, the result is continuous. Um, in the end, that boils down to a statement about limits and uh, verifying that the limit as x approaches p of f of x plus g of x is really equal to f of p plus g of p. And you can imagine how referring to the um, algebraic uh, limit theorem, or what exactly did we call that? The algebra of limits back in 6.9 could be valuable 
in proving the algebra of continuous functions present in 615. All right, that's all I got for this video. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in class.